Whenever. Hi, I'm Shreya. <laughs> so my reputation is on Tyler, and um, I believe that his claim overall lacks solid evidence, and some of his points were counterclaims. So just to refresh your memory, his first claim was that child leashes are harmful for children. And his first point claim was that leashes prevent children from living. He used the source from the Women's Children Health Network, which essentially stated, children are learning from the world around them. This quote is about learning and exploring, but doesn't state the presupposition that leashes prevent kids from learning and exploring. He derived this meaning from the <coughs> inference, and it may not be the whole side of the inference possible from this quote. He also said, children who are given more freedom in their lives and adulthood are more independent in their future. But this fact is not backed up with any statistical data or evidence. His second uh, supporting statement was that child leashes create less intensive parents. Um, he says if they're not attentive, it allows children to do more things that are unsafe for a child. However, this situation is just one of many possibilities, and Tyler fails to, Tyler fails to recognize there might be more. Then Tyler proceeds to state, Kids, may, kids might still do bad things if they were on a leash, such as pick up stuff off the ground and eat it. But logically, without a leash, kids would misbehave way more. So this statement hurts his argument rather than supports it. Also, uh, he fails to recognize other possibilities. For example, parents might be more irresponsible if kids are on a leash, and if they're forgetful or might be tired from work and just really need to go grocery shopping without leaving their kid. Throughout this uh, claim, he mostly talks about hypothetical scenarios which are very strong to support <coughs> his claim. And finally, his last claim was that demeaning children is harmful for children's health. He quoted an article that said, repeated unpleasant encounters with others, especially those that occurred during the early years of life, can have a powerfully adverse effect on adjustment. However, being traumatized by the fear of getting lost and other uncontrollable situations away from a leash is much more traumatic than being seen by other children on a leash, which is what he argued. He only provided one example, a personal example, of himself getting lost. His personal experience was traumatic, and even though he said that it taught him boundaries, it contradicts his current point that leashes are traumatic. Overall, this weakens his argument. So, in conclusion, I believe that in Tyler's argument that <coughs> children, that child leashes are harmful, there are not enough examples and no solid statistical data. His whole claim is based on hypothetical examples which create a big argument. Thank you. Sorry about the sneeze in the middle of your speech. Uh, sometimes you just have to catch up. Um, the propositions labeled pretty clearly. There's not a preview of what the supporting points are going to be, but you do label them as you get to each particular point, which is fine. Your main argument against most of his presentation is the absence of evidence, uh, his over-reliance on hypothetical examples, and uh, some of the hypotheticals you try to turn around on him, and I thought that that was pretty reasonable. In fact, the one personal experience that he cites seems to support the position that you're taking on that third point, rather than supporting his position. So I thought that that was an interesting way to go about it. Uh, the reasoning arguments need to be challenged a little bit more. The evidential challenge, I understand. If you had any evidence at all about uh, you know, how valuable the leash has been, a, an example or two of how people were protected from losing their child, some danger that was prevented, uh, children who were on leashes who just said, you know, I was, I've not been traumatized by that. Anything, you'd be able to take a position of, superiority over his argument because you'd have some evidence on those points and he had no evidence on those points. As it is, neither of you has any evidence on your points and so now it just becomes kind of a, well, you know, whose burden of proof is it in this particular situation? And I think you do a good job suggesting that it's his burden since he's made the argument. Uh, but you come up with a whole bunch of hypothetical arguments also and like I said, I think you'd just be in a better position if you had any kind of illustration. And it seems to me like 
although it's not the best source to go to, you go to a commercial site that uh, sells those sorts of things and find reviews of people who use that particular product. I, you know, go on Amazon and, you know, Susie Jones from Moorville, California said, boy, the flood was coming and fortunately I had my kid on a leash and I was able to yank him out of the path of the you know, water or something like that. And at least you'd have something that you could point to that was a little bit more tangible. So that's my main criticism. It's not that you had <coughs> inappropriate arguments. They were the right kinds of arguments to make. There's just a lot of ways that you could make them more effectively and stronger. All right, thank you.